as, as it relates to moving around stages, first concept I want you to pay attention to is you want to stop ready to move again. So what I'm looking for is every time you stop, it's feet spread apart, knees bent, ready for the next movement. That sounds super obvious. However, what you see people actually doing, like let's say you run over here, and you see the first target, start shooting, and then you'll see people kind of finish standing like this, and like, oh, I didn't go far enough for this one. And they go over and they shoot this one, and now look at, they're in this position trying to go this way. Like that sort of thing, very, very common, yeah? So we're gonna make a point of it, feet spread apart, knees bent, ready to move. Every single repetition you do, you wanna both start and stop like that, and you wanna consciously check yourself to make sure that that's happening. You wanna build the habit that basically, if you're standing like this shooting, you don't, you don't like it. Like you'll just naturally wanna be lowering down and spreading, your, spreading yourself out. That's rule one. Number two, when you move, I want you to move full power, full speed. Like, let's say you go through this twice, dry at speed, you should be winded. Like you should be sucking gas. If we're doing repetitions, like two positions movement with like long movements on that, after five, six repetitions, you should be sucking gas. Like you should be <sighs> huffing and puffing. Okay, and what that's doing from a training perspective, that makes sure that you are going, you're going full power. And that's important when you're training because then you learn how to slow yourself down, you know? It's like if you put a bigger engine in a car, you need bigger brakes. So it's kind of the same idea. Like you need to learn to slow yourself down. What people end up doing is they don't feel confident going through stages a lot and they slow down their movement a lot into a kind of a slow walk. So we don't really want that either. Number three, this is where you're gonna make time a lot. When you show up in position, you wanna be ready to shoot. What does that mean to most of you when I say be ready to shoot? Guns up, ready to. Shoot. Yeah, guns up, ready. Target. Exactly. What we're looking for is that as you approach a position you're gonna be shooting from, you need to look up at the target, mount the gun, and start getting ready to shoot. When do you reckon you should shoot? When your eyes are on a specific spot and the sights are around there? Yes. So what I'm looking for is that it's sight driven. It's like your your decision to shoot is driven by what you're seeing. And people oftentimes, you know, you'll see them come over, aim the gun, and as soon as you see their body stop, boom, you see the first shot come out of the gun. And what's going on with that person is like kind of subconsciously what they're doing is they want to get all tucked into their stance before they're comfortable shooting. You know what I mean? Like that's subconsciously, that's what they want. And you got to break that. Your legs are going to be doing one thing as you're moving into position or out of position and your upper body shooting platform, like you're looking for targets. And if the sights look good, you smack it, period. Irrespective of distance difficulty, meaning if you come in on a 20 yard target, and the sights look good, I want you to be comfortable shooting right away before you stop necessarily. You know, even though it's 20 yards away. And if it's five yards away, and for whatever reason, you don't see the sights on the target, like you, you don't shoot, like you, you like wait to see what you need to for the target. And it's it should be entirely separate from what your lower body's doing. And I want you to go through the stage, full power, full speed, dry. A lot of times when we do this, people will say like they get more out of doing the stage dry than they do out of shooting the drills with live ammo. So I'm gonna go through this stage dry. Again, full power, full speed. I'm not gonna pull the trigger. So remember yesterday when we did target transition drills, I was trying to talk some of you out of pulling the trigger. And what did you what did you notice when you stopped pulling the trigger or simulating the shooting and you just started aiming at spots quickly? What did you notice about that? Easier to remember points. Okay, yes, what else? Smoother transitions. Yeah, you got, you got the feedback off of the sights and you knew that any movement in the sights was directly related to how you were transitioning the gun and the trigger control element was taken out of it. So for this, we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna get proper sight pictures on each target, move through the stage aggressively and all that. Um, and I want you to just watch the body mechanics and watch my head's relationship with the gun as I go through this once. Okay, so if you're gonna be critical, what did you notice there? Come on, be critical. A lot of stunner steps coming there, you went backwards versus. Well, that was just uh, that was just the engagement order. So I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna shoot those two, then the other two. I don't really care what order you shoot, like no, speed, no, it's I a mean, separate thing. Speed. speed what? How fast you Yeah, it was speed. like I'm breathing yeah. heavy now. Yeah. That was full power, full speed. The stutter steps over here. 
Notice that's me applying the brakes as I'm getting ready to shoot simultaneously, building up my grip, slowing myself down, mounting the gun and looking to engage the target. Yeah. Whew. Any time can be saved there, just in the movement part. What do you think guys? When you decide to hit your brakes, do you pick a point to hit your brakes before your final position? Uh, that's a good question, actually. So if you think about yesterday, we had this discussion about cueing, like giving yourself jobs to do like here for this movement. Like, I don't I don't like my brain to have nothing to do. Does that sound weird? Like, I don't want to have no job, meaning I'm not just going to meander on over here. I'm going to look at a specific spot and attack it. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at that spot. I'm looking for the uh, near the corner of the fault line. I know I can see both my targets from there. As I approach this spot, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this. Like, I'm getting close. And then when I shift my attention from here up to the target, at, at the same time, I'll slow down and put the gun up and be looking to shoot. I mean, a little bit of training and experience will tell you this, but it's like I'm looking at a spot and attacking it, and then as soon as I know I'm going to make it and I'm getting close, shift my attention up to the targets, then you see slowing down and looking to shoot. So you... You see the spot that you're gonna go to. Mm -hmm. Sure, translate you hit your brakes, into which line. You know you're gonna land at that spot. And in yeah. between, you hit your brakes, you land your spot. You're up on target. You're shooting. Right, but I don't. I don't. You don't have to be landed in the spot to start shooting. Right. right? Your your attention will shift up onto the targets, and from that moment forward, it's like it's game on. If if the sights are on the target, you're gonna shoot it. Is that? Do you get what I'm saying there? Yeah, I don't have to have a setup to shoot. Yeah. Sights tell me to shoot. Yes, your sights tell you, and then again. When, as you approach two, three steps away, shift your attention up to the targets. Okay, I'll go through it again. I want you to watch the elevation of my shoulders as I go through this. Do you think the sight pictures I got were okay? As you watched before? Was it can go or was it? No, it was deliberate. Yes, yeah. that's okay. That's important. Police yourselves on that. That's really important. You want to get used to getting actual game day sight pictures that you'd be comfortable shooting. Okay, watch the elevation of my shoulders as I go through this. What do you notice about the elevation of my shoulders? They stayed on the same plane, except for the low part. Yes, all right. So that's an easy way to give you an indication of, are you wasting time and energy coming into position and kind of popping up tall with your feet together? And then when you get going, like if I want to run this way, it's like, oh, I want to go over there now. Naturally, you're going to wind up and then take off. So if you see the shoulder elevation, somebody doing like this, they're wasting energy. Okay, now two runs in and you can hear that I'm breathing heavy. You're gonna learn, again, you're gonna learn a lot if you do this. I can, I can assess how my sights are bouncing coming into position. If I see something I don't like there, how would I fix that? The sights are bouncing too much coming in. I don't know about that. Slow down earlier. What's that? Yeah, slow down, like, oh, it's like, okay, I gotta get on the brakes earlier. I don't wanna come into position and like, and my feet to the ground and skid to a stop. I wanna come in there with a little bit of finesse where I can actually shoot. Okay, I'll shoot it live now. Now I want you to just note, note the differences, see what you see as far as, does just look different. think look more or less the same right right I'm telling you come over here do your draw runs on this go hard on it be hard on yourself about technique assess the movement of your sights if you're but too bouncy coming into position you can fix that with your lower body there's one other thing that you should pay attention to and it's like a really easy way to check yourself if I get here I can see both these targets. I'm like, all right, I want to shoot now. And my gun's not up here. Like my gun's not in the picture. And I see, I see the targets, no gun, and then the gun's coming up. I'm behind. You know, my gun is late to the party. 
I should be up on target, kind of not necessarily a perfect sight picture, but at least the gun's around. I'm trying to put it together. If not, I'm late. The gun is late to the party. And that'll be a really common problem because it's tough for people to mount the gun and slow down and stop at the same time for whatever reason. Watch those simple cues. Shoulder elevation, feet spread apart, knees bent. Does dude look ready to move? Watch your sights if they're bouncing. That's going to tell you a lot. And make sure when you come to a position and you're intending to shoot that your gun's in the neighborhood and you're at least, you know, at least you're in it. You're, you're, you're trying to get something done as opposed to you get into position and then throw the gun up and start blasting. That's not a good way to go. Practical shooting training. It's got drills, live fire drills, some guidance for dry fire, some dry fire drills, lots of different places you can start. It works for people of all different levels. If you want to train seriously with a handgun, especially for competition, this is the one to get.